Welcome to The Power Up, the show that brings you the latest in esports news where we discuss what matters most to gamers, our opinions on new releases, league sports, and hardware. Meet global players, influencers, and any CEOs that are in the know about the state of the esports world. I'm your host, Nars, so break away from Among Us, some Phasmophobia, Valorant, or whatever else you're playing, and join me as we talk to some New Yorkers about the next-gen consoles that just dropped. subdued, unusually quiet Union Square. Thankfully, Microsoft and Sony are not letting the pandemic slow down their next-gen console release schedule, which means in a matter of days, it's going to be an epic console showdown. So let's hear from the New Yorkers where their loyalty lies. Is it the PlayStation 5 or is it the Xbox Series X? Let's find out. So Eddie, I gotta know, because you were telling me all the details, what consoles did you pre-order? I pre-ordered the, the new Xbox and the PS5. PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5. I'll probably do Xbox because I had an Xbox uh, One. So you got both of them? Yes, did I you? got three PS5 and three? one Xbox. Yes, three. You guys got an Xbox? Like Are the, you? Right now? No, we don't. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're like, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> the Xbox is for me, one PlayStation is for me. And I have two extra because I have children as well. So one is going into my boy's room and the other is going into my daughter's room. Best dad in the world right here. He gave a console to each of his kids so they wouldn't have to fight. So what titles are you super excited for for the PlayStation 5? So there's Demon's Soul and Spider-Man Miles Morales. PlayStation 5 titles I'm excited for would be Demon's Souls and Godfall. And then Xbox would definitely be Halo. Yeah. Miles Morales. Hell yeah! Puerto Rican from New York. Like we got to represent our people, right? Yeah. Both consoles, they're kind of the same specs. Obviously, Xbox has a little bit more. What are your thoughts on like the difference between the two? The to me, honestly, there's no difference. I know Xbox is advertising more teraflops and gra a little bit more graphical, but there's really not that much of a difference, especially with third-party titles. But um, the only thing, honestly, is just preference. You choose your system depending on what exclusives you want to get. Exactly. But Xbox has that new thing where you can uh, pay like a set price. The and you have like Yeah, yeah, that thing's kind of dope. You got to go for new. Exactly. Go for new, go for PlayStation 5. And the Xbox, whatever. <laughs> Today's guest will not only have you rocking while you're gaming, but he keeps the floor lit too. He's produced music for countless artists from Jay-Z to Mariah, as well as some of our favorite games. Let's jump in and get to know the super producer, Just Blaze. Yo, what's up, Blaze? Thank you for coming on the show. No doubt, thank you for having me. What's happening? Now, let's talk about your upbringings, your childhood. Your father was a computer programmer. How much did that influence your love for gaming and ultimately your music production? Dad was the blueprint, or kind of the opposite of the, of the blueprint for me. Like, he was a computer programmer and IT guy as a profession, but his hobby was music. You know, he was a, he's a, he was a jazz organist. That was my earliest exposure to making music, was really listening to him and trying to mimic him. The reason I say he's like the opposite was because I went on to make a living as a musician, but I started out as a computer programmer. Like, that's what I majored in all through high school, all through college. I wrote my first computer program when I was in fourth grade, you know, so for all intents and purposes, I figured, you know, you, you would assume that my life would end up being the same. So to a certain degree it was, um, you know, cause obviously my computer programming plays a big part in my music production. You know, he was a computer dude, he was, he was a tech dude. So he had like games on his computer. He had, you know, the Atari 2600, you know, which was the, my earliest exposure to gaming, you know, from when I was a kid. Now, I know that you will say, hands down, Street of Rage 2 slaps, but Yuzu Koshiro was kind of like the soundtrack for the Revenge of Shinobu. Revenge of Shinobi is the one. The one? <laughs> so yeah. it's not Street no, of Rage 2. No. Yeah, no, yeah, but Streets of Rage, there's a significance in Streets of Rage where um, what he was doing with a lot of those techno sounds and things like that, were a lot of the same sounds that were in actual songs at that time. You know what I mean? Like, there's a few songs in that soundtrack that's like, yo, you went to Detroit and went to a club, you know, or listened to a Detroit techno set. Like, these are the same sounds they're using. And I think that was that, that was the significant of the significance to me personally of that soundtrack. But for all intents and purposes, Revenge of Shinobi is 
the greatest uh, video game soundtrack of all time. All right, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, NBA Ballers, NBA Live, 2K, these are just some of the handful of games that you've worked on. What drove you to add more to your already packed schedule? You must be super busy. NBA Street Volume 2 was like the pinnacle. It's highly regarded and it's, for me, that's very humbling because the same way Yuzo was for me as a kid with his work, there's a generation of kids that came up on NBA Street. The reason why that game is so historic in terms of uh, its legacy and the way it played and the way it felt. Most of the key lead people in that game were actual hip hop dudes. They were real actual sports dudes. It wasn't like run by analytics and just numbers and ones and zeros. It was like, you know, how do we capture the essence of what we're trying to do and put it on screen and put it in people's speakers. Like the game owns, the game opens up with either with one of two songs, it either opens up with Chief Rocker by Lords of the Underground or opens up with They Reminisce Over You by Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Like that just goes to show you how much they were trying to really demonstrate the marriage of street sport cult street sports culture or basketball culture and hip hop culture. And to me, that's really what sold me. Now let's let's put aside your job and your career. Let's talk about what does Blaze do, you know, every night, just casually. Like, what are some of the games that you play to simply just escape? Modern Warfare. Like Warzone? Yeah, but I don't really play Warzone much. I mostly do multiplayer. And you play on PlayStation 4, right? I, I Both, it depends on what room I'm in. So normally if I'm on Xbox, I'll uh, I'll play it in my, my, uh, my movie theater here in the house. Um, and if it's PlayStation, I normally play in my rec room. Or if I'm in the rec room, I'll play on PlayStation. Awesome, thank you so much, Blaze, for the interview. We'll definitely keep in touch. Any, we need to play. Sounds good, salute. Power up your systems and get ready for the download on Ellen Kim. She's the choreographer for one of my favorite bands, KDA. We're going to see if I have what it takes to be their next backup dancer. Welcome to the show, Ellen herself. Welcome to the Power Up, Ellen. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I got to know, how did you get started with KDA? Walk us through the, 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 the first era because this has been going on for a while, girl. Yes, well, KDA started what, 2018, because I did their Worlds, and um, it was just this huge project that I got presented from Riot Games, and they are just telling me the gist of it, and I was like, this has to be one of the most, like, creative, you know, and someone has to have a good budget to create this, and Riot Games had everything, like the creative uh, creativity, plus the connects and everything. So when they presented this American pop meets K-pop, um, you know, clash and blend of those two worlds, uh, I was all about it. We see Kadia on the top billboards with more, the baddest. Why do you think K-pop and esports meld so well together? K-pop and esports work well together because it's also an emotional drive. I realize like when people are gaming, they just want to get in the zone with music. And I feel like K-pop really works in that realm. Yeah, and you've worked with a lot of artists, Beyonce being one of them. How does working with Beyonce dif like differ from like working with like the KDA girls? I mean, like Ari, Evelyn, Akali, and Kaisa, they're characters in the video game. Like, how is it like working with the people behind the voices? Okay, so Beyonce, I was dancing her single ladies. I was one of the oh. uh, dancers out there. Um, uh, but so that, in that sense, I was just a dancer. But uh, for KDA, I was the choreographer, creative director, movement coach. This is why this has to be one of my favorite jobs because they allow me to just play. And for me, I like to um, really emerge myself into um, the characters, especially when I work with artists. I have to feel like the artist. I have to get to know them. So in this world, I had no boundaries because it was a fantasy world. It was just like, you can be creative on a thousand. So now we're going to assess if I can become the next KDA backup dancer. Are you ready for this? Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, you ready. I hope, okay, I, don't, I, hope I don't twist a, a leg or a muscle. <laughs> no, this one's gonna be easy, but it's weird. But I feel like it works very well for the characters. You're gonna have your arm, your left arm in front of you. Okay. And you're gonna lift it up. You're gonna show your little pits. Okay. Yeah, bring it down. Okay. Yeah. Show your pits. Pits. Boom. Down. Boom. Okay. Okay, girl. My bad. Five, six, seven, eight. One. Push those. Oh, pits. damn. I don't know what my head is. Like <laughs> oh, 
Boom. Oh my god, I already forgot. Boom, bop, boom, bop, right? And one more. There we go. There we boom. go. <laughs> Going down, 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 down. Here it goes. Five, six, seven, eight. Going down, down, down. All right. Dance or game like nobody's watching, and maybe someday someone will be watching. Thank you so much for coming on, Ellen. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to have to check out your YouTube because you do offer some classes on there as well. Thank you so much for that. I had such a great time talking with you. Thank you so much. That's it from this episode of The Power Up. Until next time, guys, I'm Nars.